August 4th to everybody listening. It is the Townstar a- AMA. I hope everybody's excited and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to listen to some of our updates. How are you doing, Farmer Michelle? Good. Very good. good. Happy Friday. We, we got K Sera We got Sage. We got Farmer Michelle. Ninja Surprise. And today we don't have a Musashi, so I'll be taking his place. Doing my best. This is Volcron. Good morning, everybody. We will uh, today we'll be doing a text chat on Discord, uh, just like normal. And if you're listening to this, you're listening on YouTube probably. So let's all say a little hello on Discord. All right. So uh, we we've, we've been doing this uh, a little over a year. At this point, we started last July. I hope everybody's been enjoying them. There's always some excitement. And uh, we meet just to share what's going on, answer questions. Be sure to type those into Discord. Uh, Vogue says the buffering seems fixed. So thank you to our hardworking teammates who've set that up. And um, yeah, we just like to, you know, walk the walk. So good morning, Pure Honey, Ive715, XWAR. Uh, no free lunch. Are you listening? How's it sound? Fire bell fry. Audio is excellent today. Oh, great. A rocket unit. Lazy lumberjack. Hey, man. And camera. All right. Well, uh, we'll probably get started here. Um, let's do something fun. What do you guys think about something interesting, something something fishy something aquatic what do you think <laughs> you know have... i got up extra early the other morning to go for a walk at 6 30 which is really really early for me i actually early. went back to bed after i went for my beach walk before meeting started <laughs> but while i was out there i saw a dead stingray on the beach Whoa. which is odd we don't usually see stingrays washed up on the beach in myrtle beach usually it's just a bunch of jellyfish but it was oh, very wow. strange to see dig? the jellyfish. No, no, yeah, the, the stingray. The stingray, yeah, he was pretty big. He was more than a foot around, and his tail was probably like a foot and a half long. It was kind of sad. I don't know where he came from. He must have got like trapped in the surf when the surf comes up. I don't know how it all works. I'm not that great at the ocean. I try not to go too far out because I'm <laughs> very worried that I'm going to get sucked into the ocean. It's, it's a dangerous place out there. It is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's. Oh, poor stingray. Are you sure it wasn't a mermaid? You know, I saw a mockumentary about that. Do they turn into stingrays when they die? No, they just oh. apparently wash up on History Channel. Um, Maybe it was just <laughs> sleeping. Maybe it wasn't dead. Maybe it's just taking a Did break. Did you poke it with a stick? I did not that's, poke it. I, I went very you far it. around. <laughs> wow. How about you, Ninja Surprise? You got any uh, interesting experiences with the water world? Yeah, when I was, uh, I, th- I think like around 14 years old or so, I actually went shark diving. It, it wasn't like in the in the ocean or anything like that, but it was uh, basically like the local aqu- uh, aquarium over by me. They were actually off. They have like this big uh, tank, and there's uh, some uh, some sharks that swim around in it. And uh, pretty much like they were offering that you can go down into like a in the cage, and uh, you could basically sort of swim with the sharks from behind a protective barrier. So uh, I did that uh, when I was younger, uh, when I was like about 14 or so. And uh, it was a pretty fun experience. You get like really up close with them. I mean, of course the, uh, you know, the, the guy, I don't know if you want to call it the guide or the instructor uh, was basically like, yeah, don't put your hands out there. I'm like, oh yeah, don't worry. I'm not going to put my hands out there. I don't want to, I don't want to be a one, uh, you know, get my uh you know become like uh, fi- uh become like shark food you know <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah it was like you know pretty common logic but uh, yeah i mean the other other than that though yeah shark diving is pretty cool uh if you guys want to get up close to uh sharks wow do you know about how long were you in there i don't really remember i think it was maybe somewhere between maybe like around 45 minutes maybe or between maybe 30 oh and 45 gosh. minutes or so uh it, it's you know it, it goes fast believe it or not because you're just really uh it's so intri- it's such like an intriguing thing to do and it's just like this completely different world that it just feels <laughs> like and you're like oh my god big sharks I'm looking at these animated shifts they just posting it. <laughs> baby shark, oh my baby. goodness. <laughs> How about you, Kesar Osaral? You got any um, interactions with fish? 
honestly i have not had much interaction with fish uh, mm-hmm. i could probably count on one hand the number of times i've eaten fish in my life even oh wow uh, the most interaction would be is that i used to have a fish tank but i never had the heart to put a fish in it just the idea yeah. of it sounded so depressing <laughs> so that's the most i got wow that is that is awesome that's very heartwarming i've felt the same um how about you mr sage oh lots of fish stories my father was of course in the navy so we lived a lot of places near the oceans uh maybe we, we were talking about sharks uh my third son and i went to gulf of mexico to swim with whale sharks they're not actually sharks right they're giant fish but when you're you jump in off the boat and they're just swimming lazily along you're not allowed to touch them but you can be next to them and it's just an insane incredible experience to be next to this thing that's about i don't know the size of a bus gentle wow. just moving and you, you swim and keep up with it and it's like well great uh you're not again you're not allowed to touch it or interact with it at all but it is it is an amazing thing to see a beast that large you know a foot away from your face so now yeah, that yeah. that's it yeah I did have another shark interaction uh, I, because of one of the PR trips we made for Lord of the Rings back in the day. Went down to Australia, New Zealand, and then stopped in Australia. And that was, uh, I got to go in the Great Barrier Reef. And it's nothing like seeing big open area and then a live wild shark look at you. You know, Oh my gosh. Like 30 yards away, but the visceral spike of fear was like, okay, I'm, I'm moving now. I'm oh moving. my gosh. <laughs> Wow. I, yeah, I, I don't have uh, too many fishy experiences, but um, I was going to make a reference to the old IRC trout command, but actually your story reminds me of um, first time I went to a, a, the tiger sanctuary. I didn't know what to expect. And when I came around a corner off in the distance, like about a hundred yards away, I saw a tiger, and, but the chain link fence between me and him, I, my eyes didn't pick up. And those orange and black stripes, like a hundred or so yards away, I was frozen. I couldn't believe it. Like maybe that's how you felt when you saw the shark. But. That that was definitely it. I was a visceral. I have no idea what to do. Spike of fear. Wow. And then I was like, okay, I'm getting away. And he didn't care. He didn't give a crap about me. He was just swimming. But swimming yeah. Wow. Well, uh, that's that's awesome. Well, let's move on to our headlines. Um, uh, let's see, Mich- Farmer Michelle, do you want to MC this? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> it looks like we're uh, starting with some chat with uh, K Sarah Sarah about earnings. Uh, yes, so we have the first draft of the light paper ready. Yesterday we had a first discussion on it. There are a few details that we are still ironing out, but we are really hopeful that next week it should be out and we'll have a lot more details to share in the next CMA. Yeah, I would, I would jump in. Can I kind of share a couple of notes? So I was sitting through the review. Uh, Kesar Asura and I were having a, a pretty in-depth discussion. Um, uh, one of the comments, and I, I won't share t- details. It's just not appropriate to share too early yet. But uh, some of the, the new innovative thinking that uh, Kesar Asura put together, uh, I, you know, complimented him on something that I'm, I'm almost sure that nobody's thought of before. So there's some good stuff there. It's interesting, but uh, you guys know how it goes. I mean, everybody, we want to get this out as soon as possible. We want to get it nailed down, but we also want to do it, do it well. Um, and so you just rest assured that's happening. Hmm. Uh, I think our next headline here is a reward structure for this next event. Uh, we have uh, no plans as of now to change any of the reward structure. If we do, we'll let people know. Uh, the competitions will go on as they are. We've been hearing from a lot of people that uh, it would be great to have a one-week break. So we are figuring that part out right now, how we would go about doing that. But other than that, we're good. Hmm. All right. So if everyone couldn't hear that, it's a reward structure staying the same for next week. Uh, there will be an announcement if we decide to change it. There are no direct plans to change anything now. We do hear people talking about might wanting to take a week off, so we will we'll think about it and let you guys know. And let's move on to our next headline here, which is mobile updates. Oh, awesome! Yeah, well, uh, you know, everybody wants to have as many good experiences with this game as on as many platforms as we can. So mobile is priority. We have a significant portion of our our dev team 
dedicated to it. Um, our uh, our CEO recently picked up, and so did uh, Mr. Sage here, picked up our mobile game, and they were pleasantly surprised. So that was nice to hear um, how it played on, I think, an iOS device they were using. So we're targeting HTML5 first, right? Uh, so in the browsers on mobile, we want that to be a really good experience because what you get there is the same as you get on any desktop. Uh, it's a very compatible way to do it. And right now, the features we're working on are, of course, any, anybody who's tried mobile, you've seen the uh, forced landscape mode, which I think is nice. All the touch uh, inputs, making sure the spinning and the clicking and even the mobile stuff like, you know, um, we'll give it a try. If you haven't tried it mobile, log in and, and see what it's like to place things, because that's a very different mechanic from how it is on desktop. And uh, devs worked real hard on that. It's great. Going to continue to improve. So any feedback you have, UI, whatever, let us know. Currently, we're working on a couple uh, visual artifacts. Uh, there's a little black bar on some devices at the bottom. Uh, that's in test right now. And that's our mobile update. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, what about Galachain? We got any Galachain updates? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, I thought I thought it would be interesting to share a percent done with you guys. <laughs> Sometimes that adds clarity. We're really detail oriented on how we plan things out. We're 56% done integrating Gala Chain into the game. Gala itself, Gala Chain is is way ahead of where the um, where we've been able to pull it into Townstar. And the remaining tasks, I think, are pretty doable. It, there's not too much sway there. You know, some of the harder things to predict. We, you know, we're like, oh, you know, uh, confidence levels or whatever estimates, but this is pretty straightforward task. Looking forward to seeing it come out. Um, and it's not just, you know, it's not just a, uh, you know, win earning kind of a thing. It's, it's a, it's a whole new chain. So it changes the way we get inventory, the way we refer to NFTs and everything. It's actually a really good thing and I'm excited to see it happen. So it is in progress, 56% done. Awesome. Well, that's exciting to hear. Um, let's see, what else do we have to talk about here? Any updates on nodes? Yeah, we do have updates. Um, I am not going to Tom Holland this, so I, I don't want to leak anything Bitbender or SageMaker might have to say. Um, I would just say that this is in parallel on topics of earnings, uh, of course, on Gala Chain, um, and even on mobile, right? So uh, our nodes are at an executive level and a cross team level. Everybody's working on it behind the scenes at Gala. I can tell you from engineering perspective, some of the stuff we've thought about um, for nodes, and you guys feel free to react to this on Discord. We're thinking about different high compute things, like stuff that chews up a bunch of CPU. And I mentioned this back in April, but uh, pushing out the fast forward updates to nodes and getting a consensus that way. That way your nodes are doing something valuable, you're contributing back to the ecosystem and then we're able to reduce our server costs as well, which would be a really nice win. Um, other than that, possibly use, using our, um, and I don't know how many guildmates are listening that have an interest in this, but our future public facing API for Townstar. Um, I'm not giving you dates on that, but that might be something that nodes could act as a proxy for. Now this is just spitballing, right? We gotta run it through the feasibility thing, but I wanna let you guys know, nodes are something we, we take seriously and we're thinking heavily about. So. Yeah, that's a nodes update. Awesome, thanks. Uh, what do we got next here? Um, do we have any updates on when? Oh, we did competition and may mayhem updates already here. Uh, I guess I will remind everybody that the town burn for gala on September fifteenth. So don't forget to burn your town and turn it into Gala if you have not done that already. It is getting close here. We got like, what, a month and a half? So get it done if you haven't done it already. If you need help, let me know. Reach out in the chat. Uh, do we have any social media updates, Ninja Surprise? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, a little bit of a Zealy update here. So, you know, thanks, guys, for uh, to all of you who participate in doing the Zealy quest. It's been really awesome seeing the content that you put out there. So. Uh, the rewards for last month in July uh, have uh, should be going out today, I believe. Uh, so the rewards for the top 10 uh, who placed in the top 10 um, are going to be the Green Forge and the Trinity Gemworks. 
uh, both for rare NFTs. So these are our first rewards that we're going to be giving out to those that are really showcasing, uh, you know, like a lot of hard work uh, completing those daily quests. Uh, a little bit of update for that. Uh, we are currently looking into adding some more quests. So I'm working on uh, adding a couple of new quests there and maybe just kind of tinkering around with some other reward ideas. Uh, so a little bit of about the Zealy board and uh, something else to add too is um, we've been actually listed on the Magic Store, which is an aggregator for other Web3 games. So Townstar uh, just got added on there. Uh, so we might be looking into doing some collaboration stuff with them and also the Elixir Launcher. If you guys don't know what the Elixir Launcher is, it's a uh, game launcher specifically made for Web3 games. So uh, Townstar is going to be added on there, and I'm going to be looking into some ways that maybe we could do some collaboration work with them as well. So uh, a little bit of a, a social media update for you guys with that. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ninja Surprise. That sounds exciting. Um, Let's see. I think we're moving on to game updates for this week. What all did we do? All right. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, that was a lot. Uh, so last Friday's release was probably one of our biggest ever. We had a huge push last week for uh, any player facing bugs, as you all saw the Noir Hero, tons of other NFTs. I personally fixed the storage speeds on 71 NFTs. That was a, it was a ton that went out Friday. Um, and then of course, Tuesday, we had other, other things that went out. I think 12 things that went out Tuesday before the competition started. Going out today, um, the release candidate has, oh, actually I should also mention, people who were accidentally playing in two browsers or more, or even intentionally, uh, we altered our infrastructure to not let that happen. We don't want you your old browser making save requests when the new one is the one you think you're playing on. So we improved that to kick you out of your old sessions. Um, thanks to the backend guys for doing that. That was um, a good lift. And, uh, and then we've made fast forward improvements. I am reading in Discord what y'all are saying. You're saying like the one there where it says uh, the refreshing and there were some cases where people are saying the workers are not moving fast enough. So um, yeah, actually, let me take a little side on that real quick to talk about a testing and determinism. You know, uh, anybody who's, who's listening probably plays this game pretty competitively, right? And any game, any RTS or FPS, you know, whether it's like StarCraft or Halo, Command & Conquer, whatever, you know, there is a deterministic aspect to that. And the, the problem here is the complexity in Townstar is such that you need more of a weather simulation type algorithm than you do a deterministic one. Like, is the grenade rolling down the hill? Where will it be in 8.3 seconds kind of thing? So we actually run a sim, a fast forward sim. That's why we call it fast forward. Uh, but the point of that is, uh, we need to improve our testing because we need to say, given the given this town state with these buildings, this much money, whatever, fast forward X amount of seconds, the end town state should always be blah. And um, you don't see a lot of games do that. I mentioned that kind of testing to some of my friends who are also game devs, and they kind of laughed. And they're like, nobody in the game industry tests their games. I'm like, well, you know, that was different, actually. <laughs> Where, um, so... That's something that we definitely want to improve on. There were huge improvements that went out last week for Fast Forward, and I've been using it during this competition. And then um, on that note, we're always checking the logs. We're always reading them, um, making sure that the log reduction is working. There are way fewer errors than last week, so huge push by the team on that. Thank you, guys. Um, turned on more analytics. Why would you care about that as a player? Well, you want to know that we can see, right, that everybody's playing fair, that you're getting the harvest complete uh, analytics coming in, the storage complete, of course, the trade complete, all that stuff. I want to make sure everybody's playing fair and we can audit towns if we have to. Um, now, here's the big one. We are changing how stars are synchronized. Uh, I will admit that our multi-threaded async leaderboard update um, approach our architecture just wasn't working out. It was too complicated. So guys pay attention to this part for sure. I'll make it just brain dead, simple. Uh, like I'm explaining it to myself at 3 AM here, the town save, you know, your little wage timer, when that wage timer completes 60 seconds have elapsed and your town saves to our servers. When that happens and only when that happens, 
will your leaderboard be updated? So let me show you a little infographic here. This is from top to bottom time, uh, earliest is at the top, zero stars, zero stars. Town save event, both are zero. Now you've made a couple trades, you're at 110, but your leaderboard will still show zero. After the next town save, it'll match your town stars. So your town will probably always be a little bit ahead. Yes, no free lunch, two plus two is five. It'll always be a little bit ahead. The reason we're doing it this way is we want it to be absolutely guaranteed to match. So we've changed the architecture to match as the leaderboard catches up with your town saves. So that's something we're going to be pushing out today as well. Uh, there's some other fixes. The, Z the Sleepy Z's will no longer trigger when your buildings are crafting and uh, sudden spinning T's, right? We are approaching that. We are looking at all the reasons players disconnect. And, um, oh, and we're also implementing this old, let me paste, not old, but right, a feature. It's in Discord. But in the, um, telling you why. Yes, thank you, Rocket Unit. Uh, placing the info about why that's invalid to place there, a little red text. So that's good. Uh, we're also going to fix the salty field, show the green timer when it's near an ocean or a haunted maze, zone three. And um, that's that's been this week. Awesome. Thanks. That was really helpful about the leaderboard and knowing exactly when the leaderboard updates versus when your town stars update because i do see people sometimes wondering why their leaderboard score is slightly different than the one they see in their town they just have to wait until the wage timer runs out and it updates so yeah. that's good to know um let's see what do we got here Ooh. what is coming next for the game uh let's see well to the uh let's see the competition starting next week is the salmon nigiri right Yep. Okay. Um, from from engineering, I can say we're going to continue to focus on the mobile, right? Still focus on the mobile browsers, like I mentioned before. Um, first time user experience. That's something we're working on. Uh, game design as well as UI. Everybody trying to make sure that this is as friendly as possible to new players. And uh, right now, all of our engineering work for the past 8 to 12-ish work days has been on stability and on player facing uh, fixes. You know, every game team has to balance between new features and fixing. And, you know, why would you care about like so-called stability as a player, right? Well, um, every, every game dev team has to classify tickets differently based on priority and urgency and all that. And uh, Musashi and Sage and others have, have been like, hey, make sure you get as many player facing fixes out there as possible. Um, you know, there's too many little quick wins that we can make that that are not getting prioritized. So we've done that. Tons and tons of fixes that have gone out, as you guys have seen, especially last Friday. Um, so some of the things that we're working on specifically are, like somebody mentioned, the spinning T. We're improving our reconnect logic. That's not going out today. That's still in test. Um, we want to route players to less busy servers. So, you know, obviously there's 4,000 people playing that all, that doesn't all run on one server. Uh, we want to route you to the most available server. That's an infrastructure and date update we want to do. Uh, and of course, any outstanding NFT work. Um, and then we're still looking into, we had one report of a rollback. I uh, haven't seen a lot of those and definitely haven't seen as many in the logs. I hope that the combination of that little globe with the warning sign on it has helped people realize when they need to refresh we'll get to that the captain what's the meta we'll get to it and then of course frozen units so that's that's what's coming awesome thank you um let's see i think we're moving on to q a uh, there was only one question submitted that wasn't something that we were already planning on answering which we have already answered so far this morning this question says if a user enables offline mode during the competition and closes the window, does the leaderboard get updated for that user or does it only update after the user logs in again? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, just a quick recap on how offline mode works and why we think nodes would be a good candidate for that. N when you log out, 
nothing happens to your town until you log in again. So short answer is yes, your leaderboard will be updated next time you log in and fast forward completes. So I hope that clears that up. Awesome. So does anyone out there have any other live questions? We'll keep track of them. The only one that I see that we populated into our document here so far is just asking after Mayhem, which is over now, will it be weekly or uh, is it going to change? And for now, for now, it's going to stay weekly. We are looking into maybe changing it up if people want a week off. So we'll try to come up with a different cadence if we're going to. But uh, for now, just assume it's going to stay the same unless we know or let you know of anything otherwise. Are there any other live questions out there? Where on the screen does the globe thing show up? It's right on the top left-hand side of your screen next to where like your name and your town is. There should be a picture. There was a picture and an announcement from a couple from the beginning of last week. I'll find it and make sure that I reshare it again in the competition announcement later today. Yes, Billy, the brightness on the time of day was reduced. I feel like it was just for the the noon one, the high noon time, as we call it. The brightness was reduced a bit. I see Griffney asking a question about the truck returning and taking so long. I also went over that last week during our AMA. Um, the reason for that is that the the trade the truck animation is only 30 seconds long but if trade time is say 45 seconds then there will be a 30 second animation for your truck and it'll return and then it'll sit there for the the remaining time which in that case would have been 15 seconds and then you'll get your stars and your cash and then the truck will be able to go back out so if trade time is 60 seconds for example there'll be an extra 30 seconds that your truck just sits there waiting because the animation is only 30 seconds but full trade time is 60 seconds I know in the previous game, we had that little bar that showed your trade depot's progress. So we should definitely look into adding that again. That feature is, it's been requested. So we'll see hmm. when we get there. But for now, just know that the animation is only 30 seconds. So if trade time is 60, it will sit there for an additional 30 seconds after it returns. Any other live questions out there? Let's move on while people formulate their questions. I think we're, do we want to talk about the sale items next or do we want to move on to leaks? Hmm. Normally we would have a uh, case or else or off update on the sale items. Not sure if let's he's ready to share that or not. Yes, let's do that. Sweet. Uh, so, as we said before, we have fishing coming up next week. Uh, and we have two great NFTs to add you in making the best fishing town. First up, we have the aquaculturist apartments. It's a village full of aquaculturists and not just any aquaculturist, but elite. Uh, that move 50% faster and charge 50% less. Let me paste all the details. And here's the cool art that we've been working with. Next up, we have a fishing platform. The advanced fishing platform that can be placed anywhere and will only need half the ingredients. What that means is that it's pretty much like your wild net fishing and it can be placed just about anywhere in your town. Uh, let me... Yes, here's the art for it. It's an, as you can see, it's an inland fishing platform that you'll be able to place anywhere. So apart from uh, these items being available separately, they will also be available as part of a pack. The Let's Go Fishing Pack, it will come with one aquaculturist apartments and two advanced fishing platforms. There will only be 50 of them in this store and they'll be priced at $500, which comes to over 25% of discount. Uh, I think that's about all I have. Back to you, Michelle. Awesome, thank you. 
Um, I guess I'll go into the competition really quick, and then we'll do art leaks with Sage. So the current competition was decorated cakes. That one ends in just a few hours here. The reward for that one was the Crafty Shrimp Farm Blueprint, so that is going to increase the speed of your shrimp farms, depending on rarity that you get. Uh, the next competition, as we just said, was the Salmon Nigiri. Uh, the reward for that one, I believe, is a speed boost for the fishing platforms and the wild net fishing. That biome is going to be forest north with no oil seep. And there will only be one ocean side. The rest of the sides will all be forest. That one ocean side will be on the east. So that means you will be using mostly fishing platforms and not wild net fishing. So prepare yourself for loss of fishing platforms. The trade time there will be 30 seconds, so nobody should have to worry about the weird gap after the animation of the truck this week. You're welcome. It'll still be one gas. <clears throat> uh, we're going to cash boost white rice at 6,800 uh, cash per white rice, and salt is going to remain boosted at 8,000. We're also doing a couple of other core changes to some points for this week, so shrimp is going to have a star value decrease from 57 to 30 stars each. Seaweed is going to be reduced from 12 to six stars each. And fish chum is gonna be reduced from 165 to 110 stars. And those are permanent changes, not meta changes. Uh, that is all that I have for the competition event this week. Do we have art leaks, Sage? Yes. There yes. they are. Can we see them? Good. You know, it's, it's crazy because I'm in a weird internet situation and this seemed to upload that art very, very fast today for some reason. But let, let's kind of talk about a couple of the images there. Um, if you look, the first one I put up, there's a seaweed farm uh, farmer guy, right? Uh, person, sorry. When you look at that, you can just, again, we just like to show the progression of, you know, how things look as we're working on it. And when you, you know, uh, you look at the first original 3D model there, you're like, wow, look at all those triangles in there. And there's a lot of little details. And kind of as you look at it, you're like, are, are you actually going to see those on the game board at the regular game Zoom? Not really. So our team, Gina, Bobina, everybody kind of went back, gave some feedback to the outsourcing, scaled things down. Uh, and looked at them and then came up with the, the alternative, which uses less tries. And so for everybody who's out there worried about performance, just letting you know, we're always, always focused on that. Um, next image there, you can see, boy, we had to pull all of the NPCs together to make sure we're getting a common style as we're working forward. Um, you know, sometimes you get style drift and you can see um, you know, how we're just trying to work on that old versus new and keep that together. It's kind of a cool cast of characters when you actually look at it. Let's see, let me pull up uh, next one to talk about there. It's the rice husk storage. Uh, the key one I'm pointing out here is when you look all the way to the right hand side, you see V2 versus V3. Again, this is an optimization of how do we reduce the number of tries, the performance hit that this building is going to you know, put on your GPU and your CPU as we put it in there. And you can see not much difference, but still a nudge down of maybe about 10% on the number of tries. So a lot of hard work going on the optimization. A couple of other notes and, you know, just like sharing stuff that's work in progress. You can see um, on the image with all the, the you know, the, the green uh, terrain there and the different characters and whatnot, working on tomato plants. Uh, you can see the original ones almost look like sea slugs with red pimples on it. And uh, you were trying to come up with a new version for the new game. Or sorry, yeah, the new version of the game. One of the things to note is you, if you kind of look over there, at in, in the far kind of right side and you zoom in on uh the sushi restaurant chef you can see how sometimes a, a, an evolution goes a little too far to me the updated version looks a little bit like mickey mouse in terms of the ears and uh, hair looking like ears so we're going to jump in and address that a bit um, and you could just see some more progress on there uh, a couple other Im i guess one other image there is the italian restaurant just again showing you the evolution of how we start where we start uh, with the concept and work our way through the process. And that's all we got on the art update there. That is so cool. Yeah, I'm so excited for some of it to come to come live. I see it in our uh, 
we've got that one staging server with all the new art in it, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea when some of it's going to start going out so players can see it? Hmm. Uh, when? Yeah. Uh, I can jump in there. I know that uh, Musashi and our producer and the art team are looking at making that just that, that transitional leap. Like, let's just swap it over, do a check and push it out. And you know, before we had the idea of releasing it in tranches, but now it's like, hey, I think just a steady stream. So I know there's plans being put together on that. I don't have the exact details yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. Well, uh, I, I think that's about it for Volcron's updates. Uh, I don't have any anything else to do. Maybe I could answer some questions audibly here when people have have them in Discord. Yeah, does anyone have any live questions out there? That was really all we had to talk about this week. It was a nice, quick week. There What's are the people... Next meta? The next meta is Salmon Nigiri. Go for it, Volcron. I know you were going to say something. Oh, just uh, regarding fast forward. So we put the percent sign in there. Uh, so you'll know, you know, oh, I have time to, you know, stretch while <laughs> this is loading. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing people saying that they're showing screenshots and asking, will this ever load? And there's no percent number in that circle. Uh, that is a bug. I would refresh. It should come up, briefly have no number in it and then immediately go to like 0%, 2%, whatever. If you don't see the percent increasing, uh, refresh, because that is a bug, and uh, I'm following that right now. So, what, Are we going back to the jewelry line at some point? Yes. Yes, we do have plans for more jewelry in the future. When do we get... Uh, Necla I think I saw somebody typing this just now. When do we get necklaces and bracelets with um, Townstar team member names in the art? Oh, like, that would um, be fun. <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? The Farmer Michelle oh, yeah. pendant. <laughs> that sounds really cool. We have to do that. <laughs> be great. Oh my gosh. And uh, sparkly particle effects around your farmers. If you've got the Farmer Michelle pendant. <laughs> be amazing. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, LV Postman. Yeah, the Malta and uh, the previous year's uh, Gala verse uh, NFTs have been fixed. So anybody who's tried to place those, um, yeah, those will be fixed. Thank goodness, right? Seahorse, thank you for bringing back old meta and fishing meta. Yeah, anytime. Can we get practice ability? This is from Zibor on the casual while competition is going. Um, yeah, you can always exit your competition view and enter the casual view. But if you mean um, two towns at the same time and two browsers, no, that's that's not going to happen. We took that out. People are just making mistakes, running their town on two browsers and then being surprised when one overwrote the other. And yeah, so it's not that's not a good thing. See, I'm well and asked a question about what will happen if your town is on fast forward, but you don't log in until. Yeah, after that. that that was people's primary concern about fast forward. Um, you will not currently you your town will not be fast forwarded uh, currently. So what we need to do, we have plans to fast forward all towns up to the very last millisecond of the competition. If you were not logged in and playing um, for now. Log in before the competition ends, even, you know, 15 minutes, let it fast forward, bring you up to date and just stay connected to the game until the competition ends and you get taken back to the main menu. So will we, he says, so will we risk fast forward results after it ends? Well, if you wait till after it ends, you won't be able to join the game. Right. And the only way fast forward happens is once you pick your town. So um, be in your town.
Tantrum. What happens if we go to casual town while the competition's going on? What stopped my town running in competition mode? Now, if you go into your town settings and you say play offline, uh, set to checked, the next time you enter that town, if it's been more than 60 seconds, your town will be fast forwarded. Seahorse, can we add leaderboard to casual server? Michelle, I feel like you would know about that. Is there is there a historic reason we don't do stars on casual server? I know that we used to for the old game there was a leaderboard on every server, but it ended up causing a lot of confusion with new players who thought that because there was a leaderboard on the five non-competition servers that it meant that they would get rewards. So it just caused a bunch of confusion for everybody. So we removed it so that it wouldn't cause confusion so that people would know, oh, there's no leaderboard. There's obviously no leaderboard rewards here. So that okay. is why there is no leaderboard on the casual server. Um, I don't know if that'll be that way forever, but for now, while we've just got the competition events going and then the casual for practice, there's not going to be a leaderboard on the casual server. Okay. Would, um, yeah, no free lunch beat me to it. Would, would it make sense to have a modified view so you only see your current star, talent, uh, star count just for your town in casual and you don't get distracted or confused by a leaderboard? Would that make sense? Yeah, I mean, if we could find a way to make it so that it just showed stars, but said that there was no leaderboard and that there was no rewards, that would definitely work out. Okay. Putting some notes. All right. Any other live questions out there, guys? Captain Chimpitter leaderboard on the top with no, there are no payouts for this leaderboard. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think Michelle's idea might, might be better about just having the stars. Mr. Trupo, we kind of talked about the research center a bit last week. It's, it, it kind of will come back into the game in a way, but it's not going to be the same as it was what the research center was in the town star legacy game was a test to see how buffs would work if we could have a way to add buffs in the middle of a game and you know how that would all work if people reach them and achieve them and if you know if it would update and how that would affect gameplay and if people were interested in doing things like that and i imagine at some point it'll end up being a coin sink in the game where you can you know spend your coin and It'll boost your town that way, and that'll probably work into the economy somehow. We will have the light paper out in the next couple of weeks, I imagine, and there'll probably be some more details in there about how coin sinks will work, but that's that's what the plan is for that. Hmm. I have, um, you, you know, we kick around ideas all the time about different stuff that make the game better. Uh, what would be the reaction if we had a third? It's not casual. It's not competition or events, um, but it's NFT practice mode where you have one of the, you know, highlighted NFTs that week or whatever available to you just in that practice town, or maybe we put that in the casual mode as well. What, what would the reaction to that be? Do you think Michelle? If we had a mode where people could use NFTs, a mode where if you don't own an NFT that we're highlighting that week, or like, hey, this week, we really want you to see, you know, the Malta NFT or, or something we're selling, um, have a practice mode where people can experiment with that NFT to see how they, how they like it. Would that be a popular feature? I think that'd be super cool. I like to jump into spider tanks and play around with other things that I don't have, though, usually through the rentals, because you can, you can test them out, see what they look like, see if you want to buy them. Okay. Awesome. I think it comes in handy. Yeah. Okay. People are putting it much more concisely. Teaser mode, NFT test mode, try before you buy. Uh, okay. That seems to be. I see a lot of people asking about if there's going to be updates to fast forward this week. I, there are pretty much constantly updates for fast forward. So. Mm hmm. It's pretty much every time there's a game update, assume that there's server stability updates and fast forward improvements. Yeah. Fact. Fact react. Um, 
dragon <laughs> nft first oh interesting i think uh case ross raw had had an idea uh, for new players to make you know one of the main challenges right is gas production um what would you guys think about a a newbie town where you get free gas only in a casual mode or you know something that produces gas for you or trades right the nft that trades for no gas cost or imagine you come with a green dragon sitting on your board yeah all right well what do you think sage from michelle case what do you think guys? i don't see any other live questions i just see people asking for the same features over and over and over again <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that concludes our AMA. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, it was really fun. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like subscribe. and subscribe. Non-ironically, right? We're saying, yeah, please do. <laughs> and, and just double checking, everybody, the audio stream could.